Michelle Beckham Corbin, president of social media firm C3 Creating Connections Consulting. And I'm Mark McCumber, president of McCumber Creations. Welcome to our new show, Digitally Speaking. Now you may be wondering what Digitally Speaking is all about. Well, Mark and I have come together to come up with a series of social media shows to present topics that are going to be of interest um, to not only business folks wanting to know how to incorporate digital media into their marketing efforts, but also to just regular folks um, who may want to use social media in their daily lives. So our hope is to present um, a lot of different topics that you will find interesting, um, educational, and uh, may even cause you to think a little bit. So we're really glad that you were able to tune in to this show. Uh, it's a very exciting world out there in the digital world. We have so many different opportunities to take advantage of accessing the internet and being able to create brands for ourselves in, in marketing. So what we're hoping to do is dispel some of the myths. Uh, there are some folks that are still fearful of mm -hmm. the digital world and there's no reason to be fearful. So we're going to touch base on a lot of different topics in this series. So we're glad that you joined us today. Very excited. I'd like to thank ACTV for hosting us and, and we've had a lot to talk about today, Michelle. Yes, we do. And I think today our focus is going to be on um, using social media for businesses. And so, um, you know, you may be a small business owner out there and you recognize that you really need to beef up your marketing efforts. You need to have some kind of a digital presence and you may not know where to start or how many different social media platforms to be on. And so what I'd like to start with today is talking about setting a strategy. There are so many different things to use out there from uh, Pinterest to Google Plus to Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. And I think, um, you know, it can be a bit overwhelming. It, it is. I, I think strategy is, is one of the most critical things in, in any marketing plan for, for a business person, whether they be a small business, an entrepreneur, uh, some kind of single source provider. Um, it's it's really difficult sometimes to really get a focus on who you are and what you want to be when you grow up, so to speak, and, and who you want to target things to. Just right. defining your segments, as we were talking earlier, defining how you want to get that message to them and what do you want that message to say. Right, so right. It's, I think it's a big challenge for uh, any entrepreneur um, or large business for that matter. Is, as a company used to work for Procter & Gamble has battalions of people working on these things day and night, you know. That's right. And wouldn't we all, you know, as small business owners, like to have a battalion of, of folks working on our marketing for us? Uh, you know, but the wonderful thing, though, is that if you know how to use these tools and you know where you should be, um, you don't really need to have a battalion. You know, just knowledge, um, knowledge and time will really help your business a lot. But it really does start with having, having that plan and uh, really knowing where you need to be. So in addition to the things that you mentioned, Mark, what I would also add to the mix is, um, you know, obviously you've got to know your brand. You've got to know um, the story that you're trying to tell, right? The call to action that you want people to take. Mm -hmm. You need to know who your target market is. And the other piece is you need to know where they reside. Mm -hmm. So you could have a target market um, maybe that is just all over Twitter. That's where they hang out. That's where they're going to catch messages about your business. And so you need to have a strong presence there. Um, so it really depends on, on what kind of business it is. So I'll, I'll kind of throw something out there. Facebook, for example, very easy for a brand, let's say like a restaurant to be on Facebook or even an mm -hmm. entertainer. Um, there's a lot of room for conversation by fans or even a sports team like our own Cincinnati Reds. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to talk about how the Reds are doing. They want to see pictures of their favorite players, etc. You know, and there are some other businesses um, that it may be more difficult to really kind of spark engagement on Facebook. And those are businesses that um, doesn't mean that they should not be on Facebook, but their strategy's got to be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I thought it might be interesting for um, those folks who are, who are watching the show to um, kind of talk about 
your passion and love for the entertainment industry and um, kind of your journey through that and how someone like yourself or, or another small business might take a look at social media from a strategic point of view and trying to determine what they should use to promote themselves. Well, sure. Um, and it's timely that you bring that up because I truthfully am in the midst of this whole thing and putting a new website together and, and been going through this cathartic process of analyzing who I am and what I want to be and how I want to portray that to folks and what it is I'm really trying to sell. Um, and doing what I do for a living, um, songwriter, singer, producer, and performer, there's a lot of different hats that you wear and they're all, they're all different and they all have different markets. If I'm trying to write a song that I want to license to someone, say I would really love for Procter & Gamble to license one of my songs and uh, I can go lay on the beach for 20 years. <laughs> but truth of the matter is that, 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 is, a big, that is a big segment of the industry that, that is, is really becoming more, pre more prevalent um, and accessible to writers like me where in the old days there were gatekeepers that you would have to go to New York City or go to Nashville or go to LA and you'd have to wait in line and maybe you would get an audience and maybe you wouldn't. Now you have such accessibility through Facebook and the internet and all these abilities to get your product, to get your songs, to get things out so people can hear them and hit on them and maybe they purchase them because you can sell them so many different ways now. Right. Um, and, and that's just one aspect of it. Um, the other aspect is performing lo you know, locally or regionally and how do you promote your performance aspect of that because you want to back your product and if your product is a new CD that you just came out with, how do you then get to get to folks who will show up to see you at a performance? Right. So there, there's a lot. There's a lot in the music industry um, specifically, but the uh, the exciting thing about it is is there's just so much potential, um, a plethora, a myriad, a cornucopia mm -hmm. of all these different applications and ways that you can get that. And I think the challenge is much like marketing any product. How do you separate yourself a little bit? Sure, you do it by the, the material that you write and the songs and the genre that you perform in, but you also have to do that by kind of trying to figure out what can separate you a little, a little different besides wearing crazy outfits and you know doing something really, really off the wall, which is not where I'm at personally, but there's, right, there's right. a real challenge to that in, fig in figuring that out because there are so many good news is you have this all these opportunities. The bad news is so, so does everyone else. So does everybody else. And so what you're really talking about is, is branding. It's, yes. it's, it's how, um, how does a company, a performer, an artist, et cetera, determine that unique value proposition, that, that, that piece of something that makes them stand out amongst the competitors? maybe folks who are uh, performing similar genre of music that you're performing, mm -hmm. et cetera. So yeah, finding what that unique piece is. You know, the other thing I think that, that um, is, is really wonderful is that whole viral nature. So, um, you know, as an artist, you can share your music. Mm -hmm. And um, the beautiful thing is, is that people can consume it right away. They mm -hmm. can click and, and listen to that YouTube video or if you're featuring something on a Facebook page, et cetera, they, they've got it immediately. They can listen to that clip, they can purchase online, they can own that music, and then the biggest thing is they can share it. And we know that you know you share something great with a couple of your friends mm -hmm. and it just continues and continues and then all of a sudden you've got this army of people who are exposed to the artist in this yeah. particular case or the brand or service. And, and again, it's, I think um, the possibilities are endless and there are so many artists, uh, young artists that have had great opportunities present themselves through just videos on YouTube. Um, Mr. Bieber, who's yes. now growing up um, and is just won every award known to God and man the other night on, on the, uh, I guess it was the Billboard show, um, but really kind of got to start viral. And many, many other artists have gotten their start because they posted something and it just, it, it's the, to the fourth, to the 10th, to the 20th power. And next thing you know, you've got all these hits, all this uh, amazing uh, accessibility to this huge audience. And um, gosh, everybody buys a song for 99 cents. That's right. You're doing real well. That's very right. Very quickly. So it's exciting. It's, 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 it's really exciting that you have that opportunity because years ago we didn't. Um, so 
picking and choosing how you do that and, and using um, a medium like Facebook to be able to, to promote that, um, the platform for it is fairly simple. And anyone can do it. And I think that the challenge then becomes how do you make it look different? It's like any brand. If we're all competing in a market, we're all playing music, whether it be rock and roll or a different genre, it doesn't matter. You're still competing against millions of other artists trying to, to get some oxygen, so to speak. I like that, get some oxygen, yeah. So I think that um, you know, for artists and musicians, it gives, it's, it's, a, it's a, again, a great opportunity as you build your site and as you figure out what photographs you're going to use or maybe what graphics you use to illustrate or what songs are you going to promote initially to get people's attention. Um, I think that's one of the challenges because you never know who in, in the music industry who your market's going to be unless you're into death metal or some shock <laughs> shock metal or something and you have a very small, small segment niche, yeah. small segment but um, again it's 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 really amazing what what can be done and uh, Facebook is kind of just the start of that yeah and you know um, I, some other areas that I would suggest for you and, and for other artists I think Twitter is a great place because with Twitter um, even though it's only 140 characters it, within the tweet there is that ability to embed a shortened URL or web address into any tweet hmm. so you could share or an artist could share an entire album if they wanted to hmm. do we still call them albums I do. I still have albums. I still actually have vinyl, so vinyl. quite a collection too, by the way. But uh, so, so you can share that link in, in Twitter, and whether it's you know the music, whether it's actually photos, um, maybe shots of, of being on tour, video, etc. You can insert those into the tweets, and then um, boy, spread that all over the place through the use of keywords. I know in our last show. We talked a little bit about search engine optimization and how important keywords are. And I just wanted to say that no matter which social media platform we're talking about, um, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, et cetera, keywords are going to be very important. And, and um, I guess with Twitter, one of the things I'm understanding about Twitter <clears throat> is that when the little spiders are running around and they're sensing all the change that's going on and a lot of people are following you and they're, you know, following the tweets and following your every word, they're riveted, you know, they can't wait to hear what you have to say next, um, that it creates a certain amount of activity within the site that really helps your statistics and your analytics so that it helps you stay up on the search engine optimization list so that you're popping up every time somebody, you know, puts your name in or et cetera. It, it's, a, it's another method by which we use to, to stay on top of that game. Right, that's, so it should bump ourselves up, right? That's because a huge one. it's new content and it's fresh content. And as you mentioned, yeah. those Google spiders, web crawlers are, are crawling all over and that's what they're looking sure. for. They're looking for new content. And that does, um, does help with the search results. The other thing that's great about Twitter is um, it's just a great medium to get to know people. Mm -hmm. So again, as an artist, if it were me, I would want to check out maybe who are the other artists in my genre um, that are on Twitter, what kinds of conversations are they having with people, and, uh, and actually, that's a conversation from your phone right now. There's an artist that wants to There's get There's a hot one on the you. line there. They want to ask a question. <laughs> that's right. Um, but so Twitter can be used you know, as a place to, to build relationships, um, also to be used as kind of a, a place to do some um, espionage, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of see what your competitors are up to, mm -hmm. and uh, to be able to spread your message. Do you think there's a generation gap with tweets? I mean, do you think do you think it's it's something that the the younger generation is really prone to do, and the older generation per se that is is gone into the digital world, kicking and screaming a little bit, that um, that it's more proprietary in that way? No, you know, my take is that um, that all ages are using it, but um, as far as let's say older folks. It really is professional people. Mm -hmm. So I, I've, I've heard my own friends um, who have said, well, I don't really use Twitter. I, I don't really get it. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't really know anybody that, that does it other than like my teenage children. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you know, it's, I mean, I hate to say this, but it's just kind of the world that you live in. Yeah. So if, if someone is operating in a world maybe where they're not um, maybe working professionally, 
and they're just not coming in contact with people sure. that are using Twitter. So, um, you know, and I'm kind of skewed because since my entire world is digital media 24-7, sure. um, I am surrounded by Twitter, and, and, and most of the people that I interact with and I'm friends with are on Twitter. Now, having said that, um, I really feel that the teenage population is coming hard and heavy on Twitter. I almost see them kind of moving away from Facebook and really getting into Twitter mm -hmm. and really getting into Tumblr, which is a whole other story, but that's, mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a blog. And actually, mm -hmm. um, Yahoo is making the move right now to buy Tumblr because oh, wow. it is such a huge, huge uh, platform. It's kicking in, yeah. Yep. Well, it's digital world is moving very, very quickly, ladies and gentlemen, so it's important that you're watching our show because we're going to give you all the hot tips on, on how to navigate through this, and, and uh, we've all got a lot to learn, so it's, it's almost like you can't stay on top of the learning curve enough because it's moving so rapidly. It just every day something else happens that causes change that we need to stay up on. The applications are coming out. Oh, my Lord, I, I can't even count how many applications come out on a weekly basis almost. Oh yeah. That do, people are designing their own applications at this point, specifically to do what they want, so. Well, um, and that's why, you know, to your point, so many things are coming out, and that's why being strategic is so important. When we're talking about a business, you can't kind of be that person who's seen the fly out of the corner of their eye, and they're, they're constantly kind of looking at, at what's coming next. You need to stay focused, and um, you need to make sure that you're doing some reading. There's some great blogs out there um, that are all around social media. Mm -hmm. um, for example, the Mashable blog is a great source of learning. It's it's an international blog. Um, you know, beyond that, it may be that you want to call someone to come in and, and help you kind of set your strategic plan. But I think um, with all of those different opportunities, um, one tool that I think most businesses can use is um, Facebook. And so I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about um, Facebook business pages and what someone um, or what a business could, could do with that. So let's say using you as the example and sure. your, your entertainment um, business, going into Facebook and, and setting it up, there are, there are some settings that are going to be really key um, so that your page can be discovered easily. Again, the keywords. So um, when you're setting the page up, you want to make sure that you're carefully going through each area of the settings and making sure that, that they are fitting what you needed mm -hmm. to fit for your business and um, who you're trying to reach. The other piece is customization. We talked about that a little bit in, in show number one, where branding is very important. And so whatever your colors are, your logo, et cetera, that you're using on your website, on your business cards, you want to bring that over into your Facebook page. And there are some key areas that can be customized. There's a large section at the top of the Facebook page. It's called a cover photo. That can be customized. You can bring your logo over. Um, you can create, actually, apps for Facebook. Mm -hmm. And they're really just um, mini websites, mini website pages that you can add. And, and they can be for anything. So, um, you know, for, for a band or for an artist, um, a great app would be um, a place that houses some of your songs that, you're, you know, that you've got open to the public to be mm -hmm. able to download. Maybe another app would be um, a place where they could actually purchase mm -hmm. your music. But all kinds of different things um, that you can add. I think the key thing is, once you have the Facebook page set up, you've got your name correctly, it's customized, what are you going to put on it? Mm -hmm. And that's a process. I think, you know, um, <clears throat> as I relate it to my design industry, and my, it, it becomes a process as, as you go through all these possibilities of what you can and, and as you try to get your message really succinct, because I think... Um, to some degree in the design industry, whether it be designing of, of website pages or would be design of, of architectural projects or any, any of these other things, it becomes a process where you kind of, um, you look at a lot of different things and it becomes a culling process where you go through and refine and refine and distill till you get down to the point where you've got exactly the look that you want and the message that you want to convey and um, it has to be clean, it has to be succinct, it has to be right on point and get the message to somebody who maybe is only going to look at this thing for a very quick moment. Right. And you, got their, you got their attention for a very quick moment and hopefully what you have there is something that's going to be unique. Maybe they've never seen it before. It's sending a message that um, is something they were looking for, which, which holds their attention 
and maybe better yet, they give you a thumbs up or they hit like or better yet share, mm -hmm. so that now it's starting into the viral movement where it's the tentacles are all running out and it, it has unlimited possibility. Yes, um, and you've hit the nail on the head because it's all engagement. You've got to have great content, as you said. It's got to be content that people are looking for, content that they need. But the way it's written has got to be such an appealing way that causes someone to take that action. So we get to that viral point where they do share. And so that's why a lot of times I, I share with people, you want to have that content strategy. What kinds of things do you want to share? But you also want to have an engagement strategy. So, um, you know, what kinds of things can we share that will get somebody to talk? Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's asking them a question with a, a real quick, you know, short answer, sure. whether it's creating a poll, um, you know, just something that, as you mentioned, they're going to see it in their newsfeed and they're going to want to respond in some way to mm -hmm. that, that piece of content. So a little bit of intrigue and mystery is always a good thing to uh, engage in just to keep people guessing and, and make them wonder and make them want to maybe dig a little deeper. Exactly. Because I think that that's, that's the thing that's so many layers to this that, that as people, um, as I've gotten into websites and I've built websites over the years for, for myself and others, I think one of the, again, one of the challenges is, especially in this day and age, it used to be you'd load things up with buzzwords, you'd load things up with with a lot of stuff so people can really get into it. Now it seems to be stripping that down and now you're just putting really good impactful images okay. that mm -hmm. get people's attention with the least amount of copy as possible. But if people want to look deeper, they can find it. You can have other levels of your, of your website or your Facebook page that, that get into the depth of things. But it's kind of at a glance. You've got to be able to somehow get that message conveyed very, very quickly um, and leave people wanting more so that they do dig deeper and they remember you and they share, et cetera. I think the Facebook business page is, is, is amazing because I think um, I'm, I'm just putting one together uh, for an event that we're doing um, this fall. And it's, it's, a, it's, it's a great, it's a, it's a great uh, combination of art and music together in one performance. So it's a little bit different, and um, as we went through all the imagery that we were putting on the site, and as we went through it, and, and we uploaded the page last week and got 72 hits in a couple of days, we went, wow, this is great, yeah. it's amazing. So now come the analytics and all the things that you can, you can start working to be able to figure out how you want to get the message even out further. Um, besides your own friends, and, and there's a lot of opportunity um, as, as that that whole realm of possibility opens up to you, and and that's where I think it gets confusing for a lot of folks. Um, confusing for me because I've not done it that many times. As I get into it more, and I go, wow, you know, is that, am I at the am I at the threshold where I should be hiring a professional to come in and really really help me as as a as a business owner? Um, I, I'm often um, I try to be really self-sustaining and do as much as I can myself, and I have the background to do graphics and do a lot of those different things, but there still is a point where you get to where um, you say, I'm a li in a little over my head, and um, it's at that point someone would look to uh, Michelle and say, Michelle, I really need some guidance in this. I'm, I'm struggling with, I've got all this information, I need to get through it even further to be able to make a really good sound decision and judgment as to how I'm going to continue to keep this thing on a roll. Right. And, and I think that's what a lot of folks are challenged with because um, whether it's Facebook or anything else, it's just it's the whole, the whole aspect of marketing and strategy behind marketing and setting your benchmarks and trying to get everything load it up real nicely so that you say, hey, I'm going to try to hit this goal and by this date I'm going to do this and by this date I'm going to back up and follow up and then in my spare time, yeah. I'm going to tweet. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to scare anybody away. <laughs> I mean, in my spare time, media. I'm going to tweet. But, but it, is, it is demanding. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of time and a lot of um, commitment to it, but a very, very necessary 
very, very necessary thing doing business in this day and age. It is very necessary and um, I have to say it, it's all about knowledge. Now obviously it's about time too and, and what is your time worth? And so, you know, for folks that do have the budget to hire someone, they may feel that they want to pass that on because they want to spend their time maybe doing something else that will, will help to grow the sure. business. So, you know, it, it really depends on, it, this is going to be something that each, each business owner is going to have to decide for themselves. But, um, but the key thing really is knowledge. And it, it also gets back down to you don't know what you don't know. So if someone is working on their, their Facebook page for their business, for their small business, um, they may think that everything's chugging along really well. And they may not really understand how to determine whether the page is being very successful. So for example, there is, um, there is a metric that anybody can see, anybody can see on, on any Facebook page, and it's called um, um, people are talking. And it's a little number. And it is... Um, a really quick look at how engaged fans are with that particular business page. Mm -hmm. It resets every seven days hmm. and it only counts unique people. So in other words, if you've got one of those wonderful fans that you know post five times every single day, they're only gonna be counted one time. Hmm. So when you go to a page and you, you see that number, um, you know the higher the number, the more active people are on the page. And so businesses should take a look at maybe um, businesses that are similar to them, so maybe their competitors same size, just to kind of see, well, you know, how active are the fans for that particular page as compared to my page? That's just one really quick look. But it is all about setting objectives, and you can't really set those objectives until you have the knowledge to understand how Facebook works. Like Mark, you mentioned that with your page, you're adding a lot of, um, of music and, um, and images. And those are two things that factor very heavily in Facebook's algorithm called edge rank. Um, items will stay up longer in people's newsfeed if they have one of those two pieces attached to them, as well as having a lot of what I call touches, likes, shares, comments, etc. But those um, combination of those things will allow your messaging to stay out kind of, you know, in cyberspace longer mm -hmm. for more people to be able to see. Well, these are all great topics and tips, and, and um, we, uh, this, is, this is the crux of our show, ladies and gentlemen. This is what we're going to be talking about on a weekly basis, so we're really happy that you tuned in, and we hope that the information that we're bringing to you is vital and something it's, that you really can use and apply into your lives and your business world. So it's really exciting to do this show with you, Michelle. I'm having a great time with this as we explore all this, and there are so many other levels of things that, that we need to explore for our good audience and and uh, well for me I'm learning a lot through this so this is this is great you think you think you know a lot until you know you really get into things deeper and you realize right. it goes back to you, you 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 don't know what you don't know but yeah. at least digitally speaking is definitely a start it starts the conversation so that people can go out and learn more to help them themselves and help their businesses absolutely well on behalf of myself and Michelle, thank you so much for joining us uh, today on Digitally Speaking. And we'd like to thank ACT TV and, and the good staff here and everyone who's, who's brought this to you. So um, we will look forward to seeing you next week.